All right, howdy y'all. So I'm about to do my first firing of my homemade foundry. Caught my own design, but I also inspired from some other online designs I've seen. So I got my bellows right here. I got my uh, foundry ready to go. Got all the coal and some fatwood to light it off. Got my homemade crucible. So I'm gonna show you how to make it in a second. I'll show you the process. Here's a lid up here. Drilling worked. Emptying in water now. Get some more holes looking the gas out now. Alright, the water is all out of it for the most part, so I'm gonna need to cut it now. And just to make sure, you know it's steel because you can see the rust. That's why only iron does that, not aluminum. So I know it's gonna withstand, withstand the foundry's uh, temperature. It's gonna build aluminum, so it's a good sign. Got most of the label off. It's gonna have some paint that burns off when I eat it. But I'll stand back, keep doing it outside, keep the fumes away. So as that, we're getting ready to go. So I still smell a little bit of propane, so I'm gonna use a stick with some with a uh, paper towel at the end of it. Try to burn it off. I'm gonna stand way back. I have tons of safety gear on, hair protection, uh, gloves, uh, glasses, etc. So hopefully this goes good. Uh, I don't think there's anything left in there just to be safe though. I don't want to start dribbling, you know. All right, I think we're good. I don't see any kind of flames coming out. I'll pull this out and uh, get back to it. There's still light amounts of smell. I think that's probably just the whatever odor agent they added to it. Or right, trace propane, I think it's safe. I have plenty of vent holes on the top, so if it does anything happen, it'll go that way. I'm gonna stand behind it, out of frame. Hope this all goes well. <laughs> get some water on this too it's gonna get kind of hot I hope there's no spark so far though but i'm gonna keep dousing water on it all right good progress so far the bit just exploded but besides that it's going pretty good i'm quenching in a uh, pool of water all right for my protection i got a face mask in case the bit blows up again also the, the other bit is completely destroyed so but you can see i made good progress on it so i'll keep going I took three dremel bits, but I got it cut. Looking good. I'm gonna clean it up now, find off the edges, and I'm gonna add a spout. All right, I'm just finishing wrenching up the, the crucible right now. I just took some uh, 80 grit sandpaper to the edges. For a little bit, it worked surprisingly well. And now I'm just rinsing it out. I'm gonna add a core spout soon. I'm gonna update you. Got most of the impurities out of it. You can see in the water. I'm gonna try to hammer out a core spout here. Watch this video. A little bit cold, we'll see. I don't need much, still good on the end. Yeah. See, I made a, a slight force spout to it. I kind of want a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to do it cold forged to heat it up. I might uh, temper the furnace first. I don't know if I need to for steel, but just to burn off the paint and stuff. So I don't get any impurities on my first batch. And then when it's hot, I'll pound that out maybe. Either way, this will work pretty well, I think. All right, I'm getting set up on my uh, 10 gallon metal trash can. It's a little bit big, but I think it'll work. Getting some steel wool, I'm using it as a rebar for the plaster and sand mix to hold it, make it more durable. All right, I'm getting ready to mix up my uh, foundry mix. So I got plaster here. Unfortunately, I was only able to find hobby plaster, quite expensive, about a dollar a pound, which is not what I wanted, but that'll be okay. And then I got some quick re uh, all purpose sand, a little bit coarse, but working with what I got. I'm gonna do a one to one ratio using this little one gallon bucket. And then I'll probably do about a three quarters of a bucket of water. See how that goes. Um, I don't know how much I'm gonna need. It's kind of a bigger bucket than I intended. 
or a bigger uh, trash can than I intended, but I think this would be fine. I might make it a little shallow and have the lid kind of sit down in the trash can. So I might have it sit down on here. We'll see. I'm uh, sipping it, you can see here. I want to run some of it through a sieve. Just kind of huge rocks are in there. This is really not very fine sand, so I'm glad I'm doing this. Oh, it's taking forever. All right, so about five minutes to do one bucket here, but I think it's worth it. You can see much finer this is than this real rough stuff in here. So maybe the long-term health of the, the foundry would be worth it. So now I'm gonna mix this one bucket, and I'll do another bucket, and then I'll add the water. All right, I got about two gallons of plaster here, and I'm adding two gallons of sand now. I'm gonna put it through a filter, get some of these bigger particles out. It's a portion that I would like, but I'll pass it through a small filter. And then I'll probably add a bucket and a half of water and get mixing. See the rebar I'm using in here? Let's go. All right, I got my two buckets of sand and my two buckets of plaster in here now. Took a little bit longer than I would have liked. That was really, really coarse sand. I really should have just bought play sand. Uh, in the future, if anyone wants to copy this, do not get the quick re uh, all purpose sand. It's meant for concrete. So, really not sand at all. Probably about half grapple by weight. Anyway, I'm going to mix this up now with uh, this wooden stick I got here. And then afterwards, uh, uh, I'll add the water. I think this will be enough for the foundry. I'm going to do a, another bucket of plaster and a bucket of sand. We'll see. I switched to uh, two separate buckets. I split it up because I think it's going to be a lot to do with the plaster. I had the water to be a lot. Um, this is very, very soft plaster, so I'm losing a little bit from spillage and such, as you can see, and from the wind blowing it. So I'm going to try to start mixing it now before I lose too much more. I got a little setup here now. It's quite messy, actually. I ended up adding two more buckets of sand, two more buckets of plaster, and an extra bucket of water, a bucket and a half of water. And uh, got it all set up now, tape's holding it in place. Got a cinder brick to hold it down. Got really messy, I just went inside and cleaned up a little bit. But yeah, that should hopefully work. I'll have to pry this bucket out of there when it finally sets, it's kind of a mess, but it's fine. Looks good though. All right, so the foundry is mostly set, now the plaster's set, I just wiped it up, made it clean. I'll be pulling that out pretty soon. Looks nice, and then up here, got the lid. Coleman Girl is going to be the middle of it, and then I got two U-bolts uh, as the uh, handles, so I'm going to dry right now, all embedded with steel wool. Here's the finished lid, just pull the painting out of it, I'm about to crack it off, and then we'll see how it goes. It dried pretty well though, we still spent about an hour, hour and a half, and now I'm about to take the bucket out over here, so looking good. Alright, here it is, it's gotten dark out now, but I'm still working out here, having help with my brother. So I'm getting it, took the bucket out. It's real smooth, really warm. It crumbled a little bit, but really in the greatest way, I think it doesn't matter. It's gonna crumble when I cut it too in a second for the pipe. Looking really nice though. All right, here's the bellow hole. So let's see if it goes through now. It's still a little bit wet, but it took a lot to cut through. Got an inch and a half. There's a steel pipe that's gonna be sitting in here. So there's a melt, kind of to a PVC coupler in a second. Looking good though, looking really good. All right, I got the lid. It's a little bit too small. It's gonna work for aluminum. I think for copper, I'm probably gonna want it to get a bigger lid. Oh, and it's also not perfectly centered. I'm going to uh, recast it tomorrow, but for now, this will work. All right, here it is with the lid sealed up. Crucible down in there. Not too bad for aluminum. All right, here's the finished forge. Got the bellows right here. It is a hair dryer hooked up through a PVC to a steel pipe. Cut it on the side. Got the actual lid. It's a little bit loose, but that's fine because there's nothing aluminum. I have tongs, and I'm going to use to lift this up underneath the lid. Got the crucible to be started by car lump charcoal. Anyway, ready, good to go. I'll record all the firing. I'm going to go. I'm going to go wait like an hour and a half to let it really fully set. It's only been an hour and a half since I put it in there, so it needs to set for a little bit longer, and then we're ready to go. All right, I'm chopping up the uh, wood now. They come in really big pieces, so I'm just chopping them up, filling it in. I'm going to use a piece of firewood to light it. And here is the finished foundry. So you can see the lump charcoal in there, the bellows, which is just the hair dryer that I got at Walmart for 10 bucks. Um, not very well connected, but that's fine for this first test. And this is our first ingot mold. So I just made it in uh, somewhat filtered sand, has some impurities in it, but it was just a proof of concept really. All right, we're lighting the uh, fat wood first. Hi. 
really, really hot. Oh, see it? I see it. Not much, not much at all. That's the slag, and that's a, a finished crucible. I'm gonna put it back in here to a meal. If it cools down too fast, I can damage it. All right, I just finished the pour. Didn't get a full in it. We had nine cans. Here's the slag, and here's the cooling uh, furnace. I'm gonna take it out now and quench it. Besides that, it looks good. You can see the ingot now. Not really an ingot, more of a little bit of a molten area, but it's fine. It's been about three minutes, now we're gonna quench the ingot. There it is, it's quenched. That is room temperature, I'm gonna touch that now. And let it sit. Uh, we're just cleaning up the last of the charcoal and burn out, put it into the water. I don't want to put water in here because obviously the uh, furnace is still cooling or still drying, so it'll probably crack like that. Also, you can see the lid. I know it's kind of hard to see on video. There's smoke coming out of the lid because there's still water in the Plaster of Paris. Quite interesting. Yeah, very cool. Look at that. Yeah, perfect. The final result of the first melt this year. You can see all the aluminum we got. Here's the puring it we saw. So that was from that one pour. It's not only really an ingot due to the being so little metal, but that's fine. It still melted back down. And I actually weighed this and it was well below what I expected to get. So I looked around a little bit and I found quite a bit of aluminum stuck in the slag. And there was also quite a bit of aluminum in the uh, bottom of the uh, crucible still. So I ended up doing another melt the next day to fix that. And I went to Home Depot the next morning with my brother and picked up some supplies to repair the furnace and get ready for our next uh, set of melts. All right, we're getting ready for our second firing. Uh, I got a full steel pipe now. I just re-poured the lid. I'm still gonna use the old lid for this one, but tomorrow or the next casting I'll do, we'll have a big solid lid. Um, we're gonna do some aluminum and some zinc today. All right, melt some cans down. Really heavy ingots. It's really nice. All right, and here's the result of the second day of pouring. Um, I got three zinc ingots weighing about 150 grams and one aluminum ingot weighing 47 grams. So this is a little bit less than I expected, but that's fine. Um, this is enough to work on other experiments. I'm going to try some zinc aluminum alloy in the future, maybe some copper, bronze, etc. And uh, you can see here the aluminum and the zinc. And yeah, it was pretty good. So that aluminum was made from uh, some new cans plus the stuff I'd already built the day before. And here's the aftermath, aftermath of the foundry itself. So you can see uh, a little bit of crumbling, but nothing too bad.